Greg Cameron here, and we're fixing to do a series on bits and hackamores. How to use them, when to use them, and when to change. Hey, this will be useful information, and I'm going to keep it simple so that you'll be able to really understand it and put it to use in your program. You know, we could sit here and talk for hours and hours about shank bits because there's literally thousands and thousands of them. But I like to stick with tradition. And if you really want to know the truth, I, I've probably got uh, as many bits as anybody because I've been in the business a long time and I, I love great tack. But I could probably get along with, with maybe two snaffles, uh, two hackamores, and one good shank bit. And that's really about all I would ever need in a good halter. But let me show you a really nice little bit. And when you start transitioning up to a shank bit, it's gonna be because your horse is ready. Not because you're having problems, not because he won't stop, not because his head's too high, or if, you, if he, you've got that going on, guys, you didn't lay a good foundation. You were too fast with your hands, too abrupt with your hands, too big of a hurry, uh, overbidding the horse, asking for too much too fast. So slow things down, allow the horse to learn. As Tom Dornish used to say, fix it up and let them find it. The slowest way to get there, uh, sometimes going slow, is the quickest way to get where you want to go. Quit being in a rush, in a hurry, and allow these horses to learn. And remember, learning takes time. So here's a little shank bit when the horse is ready. How do you know when the horse is ready? To me, if I, again, I've, my hands have come in. He's really working on that indirect rein. If I just pick up on one rein here, he looks to the right, then I'm pushing him over with the outside rein. My hands have gotten so close together, he's really working well off of that outside rein, which we call neck reining. Now, pretty soon, my horse is ready. To, he, I've got him prepared, and he's doing a good job of working one-handed. When I pick up on that snap a bit, he's softening in the lower jaw. He's softening in the pole. He's positioning up. All these type of things, he's understanding to give the pressure. When he picks up, he's in the right, when I pick up, he's in the right position. He's stopping on his hocks. He's got a smooth, quiet backup. That's when I'm ready to go to my shank bit. Now this shank bit is gonna create leverage because it does have a shank here. See, so this is the purchase up on top. Here's the curb strap and all, just about all of my shank bits have curb straps, why? because they're more forgiving than a chain. So I like the curb strap. I think one of the mistakes many people make when they go to a shank bit is they have their curb strap too tight. So that swing time, as soon as the shank goes back right there, they're heavily engaged on that curb strap, creating a lot more pressure than they actually need. You need that slow, what we call swing time, which is a slow engagement of pressure so the horse can follow the feel. And as I get to a shank bit, I don't want to use be, be, be more abrupt or more severe with my hands. Actually, because now I, I have ledge, leverage, I want to be softer and quieter and get a bigger response from my horse or a better response. So here's a really nice, what we call a little shank snaffle. It's what we call loose jaw and loose shank. So again, I can move this shank back without moving this shank back. So again, I can still do a little one rein technique. Even though I've gone the shank bit, if I'm riding one handed, the horse doesn't give me the response I want. I can go back, correct him with two, and then go back to one as I'm in a training mode right here. But pretty soon the horse is getting better. He's getting smarter. He's learning, he's progressing. And so we're working this horse today like he is today, doing a good job, so what? Tomorrow he's gonna be better. So remember when you go to this bit, I like the loose jaw, loose shank, broken in the middle, and a loose curb strap. And now I'm bringing my horse along and, and looking at this bit from my horse's point of view. More pressure right here, so softer, quieter hands. You know, as we talk about all these bits and different things like that, you know, stay traditional. Keep it simple. Don't judge and take your time and present it in a horse way the horse can understand. And you know what? In reality, in reality, really, if a horse understood, think about this. We wouldn't be going to bigger bits, wouldn't we? 
if a horse truly was getting better, wouldn't we be going to less bets in reality? But sometimes going to those those more uh, uh, those shank bits is so we can be lighter and be softer. But don't forget sometimes I think what's smart is even though I move up in bits, keep going back and forth. Sometimes I might ride in the snaffle. Sometimes I might ride in the hackamore. Sometimes I go back to a halter. Then I go to a shank bit. And I think by switching around, my opinion is the horse stays really light and he stays happy. So again, don't forget every horse's mouth is a little bit different too. So check his mouth out. Is he deep mouth? Is he shallow mouth? Fat tongue, skinny tongue, check his teeth. There's so much goes in to handling the bits and these different pieces of equipment that we use on the horse. But again, if the horse truly understood, maybe he'd just be going back to a halter. <laughs> hey, you keep riding like a champion. I'm Craig Cameron. I'll see you next time.